come in and share in his word. And uh, as we look at tonight, we're looking at the attributes of grace. And we've been, we were, uh, we have been dealing with uh, uh, false teaching. And, and then we got another thing we're going to deal with too. We're going to be dealing with arrogance, uh, not being a fruit of the spirit. We're going to deal with that. But as we come in, uh, just be, re be ready to go through the scriptures and, and uh, to be strengthened through the word of God. And as we walk in as believers, when we look at these attributes of grace, we want to continuously uh, grow in these. And then we know that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As we look at these scriptures and we're able to, to dissect these scriptures and be able to see ourselves, uh, uh, those that are believers, to see what God has done through Jesus Christ and the attributes he's given us through his grace. And, I, and, I, and it's, it's awesome that wherever we find ourselves that we say it's by God's grace. As a believer, wherever we find ourselves that we say it's by God's grace. We always say it's to God be the glory. And we always be grateful and thankful. Say, hey, whatever it is, I'm grateful. And I thank God for it. And I, I, I never want to be one to say, well, if I hadn't done this, I hadn't done that. Well, you know what I say? To God be the glory. His will be done. His will be done. Because when I think about it, I would think about Christ went up on the cross for us. And he was crucified for us. He was buried for us, for the believer. And then on the third day, he arose from the dead. And guess what? That was God's will for him to do that. To lay down his life for sinners. That was God's will to, guess what? Save us. That he gave his only begotten son to give his life to give us life. So when I so when I think about it, I say, well, you know, what is the will of God in our life? Then I always want to know that he's thinking about others just that we ought to. He was thinking about us. So guess what his will for us to be thinking about others too? Yeah, because he saved us. He was thinking about us that he gave his only begotten son before the foundation of the world. He gave his son for the believer. Now, you don't have to believe it. And if you don't believe it, then that just means you ain't saved. This is for the believer. So when we understand that by God's grace, through faith in what Christ did, we are saved. So we got to say that we have nothing to do with it. Because it was nothing that we could do. What can we do to offer God for what he did with his son, Jesus Christ? And not in the past, but in the now. Right. We are saved right now. We ain't got to wait on it. He went up on the cross already. He's, very, he's sitting on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty right now. He's our mediator. He's our intercessor. He is making way for us right now. right now. And we got to believe that. And so the attributes of grace is upon the believer when we understand what grace truly is. And what we said, we said that grace is unmerited favor. We said that grace is God's love for the believer. God's love. It's, it's, he's sovereign and it's unchangeable. His love is unchangeable for us. He loves us. And we, and we, I show sure man, God, man, he loves you. He, he loves us. Why? Because God ain't like us. We get mad at somebody, and hey, I don't love you no more. God, look, you're wicked behind. I love you, but I hate what you, I, I love you, but I hate sin. But I love you. I'm going to always love you. The believer. And guess what? Those that will come in that, and accept Christ right now in disbelief and accept Christ by faith through grace, guess what? You could be saved too right now. Right. So I say good evening. I say good evening. I guess that was what you call a, a, a I don't know, whatever it was. I thank God for it. But we got to get to the point to where we understand grace. We understand grace for salvation, but a lot of folks don't even understand it like that. Because we, we still something that we're trying to do to, to, to maintain grace or to make something be deserving of us to God when he said grace is free. It's a free gift. We got to understand that grace is a free gift. And then if, I, if I'm telling you and I'm preaching that grace is a free gift, but then I'm going to turn around and tell you this is something that you must do, then it, it ain't free no more. You brought me a gift. I thank you for that gift you gave me for my birthday, but I'm going to give you a few dollars for it. It ain't no gift no more. No gift, no. But you know, I just need to get... 
No, that ain't no gift no more. I just bought it. Mm-hmm. It's an insult. It's an insult to God. They say that it's something that I can do, even though now that I know I'm saved by grace, then what are the attributes of this? Well, God's grace upon us, all the as the believers, we ought to be able to share the same grace upon others. We ought to be able to walk in. Jesus said what? Pray for those who despitefully use you. And if you look through all that, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, look at everything that he was telling them, the disciples, that he was discipling them. You look at all that, it was grace all in that. Because they couldn't do that. They couldn't do that. They couldn't do that within their own. Can't do it. And it's nothing that I can train you to make you do it, but tell you to believe. To believe that that attribute through the grace of God, through the fruit of the Spirit, these attributes are within you and as God manifests them, cause you might be strong in love, you might be weak in self-control. That's right. You might be strong in joy, but you might be weak in what? Patience. Mm-hmm. But the attributes are there due to the Holy Ghost by God's grace. By God's grace that however he is growing us. Because it's God's grace, not ours, who will be done. And see, this is why I want more of us to understand and more of us to get into teaching so we understand. Well, that is ain't there. Well, it's his will. Well, I know what God's will is in my life. Well, what is it? If you know, then tell me. Don't nobody know the mind of God? Huh? What Job was going through all that and then God, what God asked me, where was you? Where was you at when I was creating his world? Huh? Now you're going through the little suffering you're going through, but where were you when I created this? See, we can't, we got to take ourselves out of trying to think that we God and allow the Holy Ghost to work in us to use us through the attributes of grace that he has for, oh no, I don't want to do that. No, you might just need to do that and allow his grace to operate within you. Guess what? That they may see the light in you and give God all the praise, all the honor and the glory. What happens is that we want to shine. Right. We want the light. We want people to see us so guess what we can do. So we can say, yeah. But no, God gets the praise, God gets the honor, and God gets the glory in all things. Everything. I may lay on my report because to God be the glory. I got to raise on my job to let to God be the glory. Huh? To God, we got to learn that the attributes of grace is to love others and to recognize and put God first and God in everything first. And recognize it's by God's grace that I am what I am. Amen. But by the grace of God, that go I. Amen. But by the grace of God, that should have been me. Should have been. been me. We, should, we really got to understand that it ain't something so good and so holy about flesh that we take God out of the equation. He is the whole equation. Amen. He is the equation. He's the one plus one equals two. He is the one, he's the plus, he's one, and he's the two. We get it? Okay, we will. So we when we look at this, good evening everybody, when we look at this paper that we're looking at, let's look at this attributes of grace in the believer. Well, why you say believer? Well, grace Okay, grace is there for anybody that will come and believe upon Jesus Christ as Savior. The grace is there. Well, I'm going to tell you like this. It say even while we were lost in our sin, God gave his son to die for us. So he still had grace upon us before we even accepted him. He had grace on us to be able to come to him and be saved. That's right. Amen? Amen. So, so we got to understand Amen. that the grace is always working. Always been there. But we got to recognize as the believer and not try to take it and turn it around to make it say, well, God had grace on me because now God loved us and he had grace upon it because he loved us upon who he is. Yes. He saw it. Okay? All right. So we're going to so say good evening once again. We're going to look at attributes. If you don't have this sheet, we have this sheet, attributes of grace. And on this front of the sheet, the first, very first little paragraph says, as beneficiaries of God's grace, by the cross of his son, Jesus Christ, he calls us to shower grace upon others. Grace is not fully experienced by the believer until it is fully expressed to others. The, the deeper our understanding of God's grace, 
the more we see it in what? The foundation of our Christian life. Amen? And I know fundamentally people won't say, well, when you get saved, you do this and you do this and you do that, you do this and you do that. Every time you do something, you're working. You're working. You're putting work in there and you forgot about grace. But if we will understand, we're going to go to Scripture too. We're going to go to Titus because it just popped me in my, it just hit me in my head. And it, it just, when we look at this grace, we want to understand now, because I said it the other day, that we're talking about the grace of God, and we look at it as grace as for our salvation, but before we can even understand how the attributes of grace work in the believer's life, we've got to first understand how uh, our salvation came upon us because of the grace of God. And it's all one. It's really all one. But but as walking as a believer, then understanding grace and not only understand it, but seeking to understand it more and more and more and more and more. Why did I say that? Because the flesh will rise up and then we'll forget it by God's grace. And and I, and the world will come at you and then throw something up on it and then we'll forget that it's God's grace. And the devil will show you some things and put you on the pinnacle and make you see this on and then we'll forget about God's grace. And we'll think, now... I, I, I want us to understand, and as we look at this, that we got to continuously, there's no way that we can ever take Christ out of anything. We don't get to a point that where we get elevated so much that we forget about the cross of Christ. It, it never should be a, a bad thing for you to say something about the cross of Christ. We never want to take Jesus Christ out of nothing that we do. Why? Because we're saved by grace through faith of him, Jesus Christ. Huh? And I, and I know we can get caught up on stuff, worldly stuff, and get caught up on things that we'll forget that surely the purpose that God has placed us here is for him. However, whatever, whenever, however he's doing it is for his purpose, okay? It's for his pleasure, amen. He, he, he created the creature for the creator, okay? So we want to look at this. And I, I, we're going to go to Titus, but let's look at this again. Look, everything we have, everything we are, and everything we will be depends solely on who? God's God. ever bounding grace. grace. How? Working, Working well. In Working in our lives. Okay? So that establishes everything right there, don't it? That established everything right now. Now, I can't be the one to tell you that what God, his purpose is for you in your life. I don't know. Well, what you mean you don't know? Well, he might be doing something different with you, but I do know what his purpose is for you to praise him, worship him, give him all the honor and all the glory within anything. Now, the other the other things that he has for you, purpose for you, is for you for God to use you and for you to give him praise, honor, and glory in whatever and however he wanted you. I don't know what it is. He might take you just to you be one person. Bring that one person to Christ. Mm -hmm. Then he might take you, in other words, do this and bring that person. That's true. But it's all for his glorify. It's all to glorify him. You understand? I don't want us to get, as believers, to get so caught up on seeing people saying, well, God wants you to do this, and then he's going he gonna to shower you with blessings. He's already showering you with blessings. By his grace, right now, that we're standing here right now, by his grace, that we're yet right here, we're able to sit here, we, have a, we, we live, move, and have our very existence because of God's grace right now. Him. Okay? And we always want to put that in context because, well, why you say that, Pastor? Because I've heard so many things, I see so many people doing certain things and, and it's, it's going to be personal right here. It's going to be personal and I'm going to say it because I have to. But, oh, you got to have faith. You have to have faith. And then when I stood by my mama bedside and see my mama wither away, then I recognized that it was God's grace to take her own home Man. with, with <laughs> him. To take her out of that suffering position that she, I could have been so selfish. Oh God, just keep it here. And my mama withered up like this and it you see what I'm saying? Now, he going to be with him. She going to be with him. So I glorify God even in that personal place. I gave God the glory. I said, thank you, Lord. You got my mama and she's in a better place Amen. with you. You get it? It can be personal like that. Even in experiences like that, you got to recognize God's grace. Amen. Oh, your faith ain't big enough. That's why you ain't healed. That's a lie. It's God's grace. 
Paul said that what even when he was went to him three times to remove that thorn, and what did God say? My grace is sufficient. So we recognize even in that aspect that we're saved and that grace uh, abound upon us because of the salvation, but then not the everyday life, we got to recognize his grace too and, and grace towards others and the attitude that we ought to have because of his grace in us through the power of the Holy Ghost now. This is the believer and I'm talking to the believers. And if you're not a believer, you'll have an opportunity to trust Christ today before we get out of here. And then you too will have these same attributes come upon you as your process goes on because he said he's conforming us to his image daily. Okay? We're being conformed into the image of Christ daily. We're not yet here, we're not yet there now because why we still have these flesh bodies. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through who Christ Jesus our Lord. So when these corruptible bodies go on, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay? But we do have the power of the Holy Ghost guiding and lead us as believers. Okay? But then you still got that old man walking on your back. And you have been to my man, get back. <laughs> he's, he's, he's still right there. You got told him. But we're going to look at this grace. And we're going to understand when the attributes of grace come in, then we prayerfully, we can be directed more by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity once again to come into your presence, Lord. We ask right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you would use us tonight, Lord God. We ask that you will open up our spiritual ears that we may hear, thus says the Lord. But Father God, we pray more, even more, Lord God, for that one that is not saved today, that they would be quickened, Lord God, and made alive today through the power of the Holy Ghost and come and accept Christ as their Savior. Father God, we pray for the body of believers today that they be edified through your word, Lord God, that we may recognize that which is your purpose for us, Lord God, that we recognize your grace, Lord God, that you have put upon us abundantly. Father God, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. And we lift you up in all things, Father God. We thank you for this opportunity once again to share in your word, Lord God. For your word said that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So, Father, we're asking right now that you give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your holy word that we may impute it to others, Lord God. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. And we say amen. Amen. Looking at this, it says everything we have, everything we are, and everything we will be depends solely on God's ever-bounding grace working in our lives. Now, we've seen up at the top, it said attributes of the believer, okay? And then it said when that truth sinks into our hearts and minds, we will live our lives what well, is grateful in responding to God's generosity of what? Great. Oftentimes, we'll get ahead of God. That's why I like the proverb 4 thing when it said, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God and allow him to direct your path. I'm looking at grace right there, that we can acknowledge him and let him direct our path. Not only that, that we allow him to direct our path and not try to get in front of him. Because you know what happens when we get in front of him. It's disaster. So if his grace is already... So so a lot of people, well, I don't know what the will of God is in my life. Well, you allow his grace to be understood in your life, then you understand you just walk. Because now we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. According, that's according to him. It was preordained. It's already, it's already done, but look at these attributes and you say to yourself, are we walking like this? Look at the attributes. I love this. I love this. <laughs> it's there. Now, allow Holy Spirit to open your eyes to other scriptures because we got some Bible scholars here. When we go to the one scripture, allow Holy Spirit to speak to you because I want to hear it. If you got, if, it, if Holy Spirit opened it up to you and you want to share it with the class, share it. And because I'm going to write it down, I'm going to go back and read it later, okay? So when we look at these scriptures, if a scripture comes to your mind and you say, I got another one that could, could express that same thing, okay? So when we're looking at them, do it because I want us to learn together. I want us to be on the same page of understanding grace within our lives, okay? And so it, so so let, let us look at it. It said, uh, anything we, anytime we find ourselves a pool 
than a channel. Okay, anytime we find ourselves more of a pool. Now, what is a pool? A pool is just that one by the water, right? Standing water. It's standing water. Okay, anytime we find ourselves as just a pool, pay attention. Self. That's right. But then guess what? Then a channel. So a channel is that water running through there all the time and flowing. And that's something that is a good, uh, what you want to say, what's the word I'm looking for? That's a good way of, I don't want to say a metaphor, but a good way of comparing. Of comparing one that's under God's grace and walking in His grace and understanding the grace of God. Not about the salvation part, but now that you are saved, now understanding the grace that God has over your life and in your life. Just like you said, everything we have, God's grace. Everything we are, guess what? God's grace. Yes. Everything we will be depends what? Solely upon God's ever bounding grace. So we want to put that in there. Man, you sure got off track, huh? as a believer now. You sure got off track when you such and such, you set yourself back. Well, it was God's grace for me to set myself back. If, if, it meant, if God was going to work that out already, then guess what? He would have done it. You see, we got to get to the point to where we understand that if God, if we trust in God and we believe in God, then however he's working it out is his grace. It's his grace. And you got to know that nothing can happen to a believer until it passes through the will of God first. Okay, so it's got to come anything through you run into in the run of a day, it came through the will of God. Came through the will of God. And that's what he said. What is the will of God? It's purpose. Yeah, it's a purpose. I know the plans I have for you and they are to, what is it, increase you and you know, but, but anyway, there's a verse. Yeah. God said, I, I, I know the plans. Yeah, he know the plans. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, we get out of his will because of our will. We put our will before God's will. But I, I still brought right back to Jesus Christ. He said, not my will, but thy will be done. Yeah. And then when I look at even the apostles, when I look at Peter and I look at all those guys that, that, that those the found that the foundation of, of the believers were built upon it. Those guys and those women and all of them, they put everything in the gospel first. That's right. That others be saved. And I will see Paul in there thanking this one and thanking that one for doing this and that. They took their whole lives and made it all about getting the gospel of Jesus Christ. They didn't worry about no necessity, they didn't worry about nothing. Paul was a tent builder. He worked with his own hand. And all he did, he said, I don't even care about my own stuff. All I want to do is get this gospel message out. And it was because they knew, he knew that the grace of God was supplying all his needs according to what? His riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Okay? And but they, they made it about God's will being done. Okay? And, it, and this is right here. It said, as Jesus so graciously laid down his life to save undeserving sinners. He died for sinners. He died for sin. And then look at the word undeserving. Now what is grace? Unmerited favor. Meaning it's undeserving. God had gave us grace, but it was not deserving. It's unmerited favor. It means there's nothing that we did to acquire it. There's nothing that we could have given him to receive it. That's what grace means. So it, I don't know how in the world we can come up, well, I'm going to do such and such and I'm going to do such and such and then God's going to give me his grace. That's totally, that's, I don't know if you want to Mike Tyson word, that's preposterous. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, how you going to do something when it's free? It's a free gift. Well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and God's going to have grace. Up. How? But see, this is where the felonious teaching is going People, you know, they use it out of context. But God will have grace on you if you You can't put them two words in the same sentence. You cannot put God to do this or have grace on you if you do. Yes. You can't put it. That's the but, same setup as the law. It's a, that's, yeah. I will you do. I will you do. It's opposite. Grace is a free gift. Now we're going to operate in these attributes of grace. Come on, let's look at it. Come on, I, I got to look at it. Now, because we understand this, it says God graciously laid down his... His God was so... Jesus came down from heaven, and he kept telling them, I didn't come to do my will, I come to do the will of the one that sent me. And y'all keep telling me this, I'm the son of God, I come to lay down my life. 
I come to do the will of the one that sent me. I didn't come to get no notoriety. I didn't come for y'all to, but if he said, if the son of man be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. He had to be crucified. And he was ready to lay down his life. He came here to give his life. Amen. He came, he's the son of God. He's God in the flesh. He's God. He laid down his life. He wasn't born in the flesh or the will of man. He was born by the Spirit of God, but he came to lay down his life to save sinners. And he graciously did it. Amen? And then, and then, and then, and then he said, he said, he said, undeserved sinners, he said, we too must learn to esteem others higher than we esteem ourselves. Jesus could have very well said, I'm the son of God. And I ain't got to lay down my life for y'all sinners. Right. And he did. He 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 he, he called out the Pharisees. He called out of those people that was being rough to his people and, and that was yeah, that was lording over the people and telling y'all making my father's house a, a house of thieves, a den of thieves. He ran them out of the temple and all because he knew that they were misusing God's people. That's right. And that's the kind of love that Jesus had. He was like, look, y'all overcharging these people. Y'all charging them too much. Why are y'all even doing this? These supposed to be in here praying. And we supposed to be in here taking care of the poor. We supposed to be doing it. Y'all up here taking these folks money like that. That's the kind of attitude that Jesus had. That's right. He didn't talk about bringing the stuff that fold and not the stuff that roll. Jesus didn't ask nobody about no money. Never did. Never did. I don't know why we come up with this concept that is about us getting money and us getting money and us being this. Jesus didn't even have a house to live in. He said, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man have nowhere to even lay his head. And we say, greater he that is in me than he that is in the world. And if you had to sleep out of doze for one night, you'll go crazy. That's right. If you went one week without some food, you'll be ready to jump off the top of the house. But greater he that is in me than he that is in the world. See, we got to recognize this grace. One day, we got to recognize this grace that we're talking about to be able to esteem others more than we do ourselves. Why should the servant have it better than the master? A amen. Jesus said, I came not to be served, but to what? To serve. To serve. To serve. Come on, come on. Oh, I know I know. We don't really, a lot of people don't like to hear it, but it's the truth. Here it is. It is that the scripture provides us following characteristics of grace. This is characteristics characteristics of grace. Somebody find that first one. Number one said, yeah, uh, grace, if you have your Bible, would you go to Ephesians uh, 4 and 3? And it, and it said, this is the attribute that said, grace doesn't insist on being right, seeks to make things right. Grace seeks to make things right, but it don't always say that I'm the one right. Pay, go to that scripture because it's right here on our paper. But I want to read up into it. Somebody have it? Yes. Go ahead and read it. Four and three? Yeah. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Okay. So that's what grace is doing. Grace is endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. That's an attribute okay. of grace. That's an attribute and of what grace. What I'm saying is that even though you might be right to keep the peace, don't try to prove that you're right. That you know, you want to keep the peace. Keep the peace. Keep the peace. Yeah, and we recognize we were talking about that earlier you when might we started. Know that you right. Mm -hmm. Everybody else might know that you're right, but to the ones that are trying to argue with you about something to prove that they're right, just. Just close your mouth. And keep the unity, huh? And keep the peace. And keep the peace. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's something we were talking about earlier that when we recognize God's grace, then we really can recognize that peace. That we know that that really that peace that surpasses all understanding. Even in situations like that, we recognize because we truly understand grace. That we just it's it's good. It's all right. And, and we just move inside on. Inside the context of the brotherhood. Yeah. This yeah. is not when you got people preaching false gospel, mm -hmm. it says whenever possible yeah. build peace with all men. But we have to contend for the gospel. But inside of the believers, yeah. Yeah. we gotta keep the peace. Keep the peace. And we are and we and you know, and I understand that too because even if attribute of belief is something that I, I, I wanna say this because I want us to grow uh, as believers, 
it's crazy that somebody could be within uh, the household of faith and they can't come in together in peace, recognizing grace and saying, well, I'm going to leave because they couldn't come into a agreement about something within the body of Christ. And that's sad. And that, and that can go back into our other study that we're going, that can go into arrogance. Right. Because can, somebody couldn't say, well, look, let's come together as brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And let, now, as long as they have nothing to do about something about how I'm saved or salvation, yeah. we ought to be able to come in agreement mm -hmm. and we ought to be able to sit that's and right. come into a, the unity. Because it told us to be of one mind. And that particular, mm -hmm. the thing that we believe, we're on point with it. Mm -hmm. We understand how we're saved. We understand who saved us. We understand what 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 the reason was that we were saved. We understand that, but, but when it comes to the body of Christ and we understand it, some people get mad because they can't. They won't let me cook in the kitchen. Yeah. That's flesh. Let us agree to disagree. Let us agree to disagree. And then Paul said, and I'm gonna go to that scripture too. And Paul said, I'm gonna, while we're talking about that, uh, oh man, that's awesome. Uh, anybody have another scripture that we can look at in that? Because I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at when we said in that when we can't come together in unity like that. I'm looking at Paul uh, in First Corinthians. I want to say in First Corinthians when he told him you are yet colonel, you are yet colonel. Yeah, he said because you can't y'all. You say you are yet colonel because you still have division. Yes. And because you you, you you know that scripture I'm talking about? So when we look at that, even in that scripture, that when Paul was telling them that you're yet carnal, we we really not understanding God's grace and operating, not operating an attribute of grace when we recognize that some things we should just allow uh Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us in that. Okay, I'm gonna even look at it, I'm gonna even look at uh Romans 15. Uh, Romans 15 and verse 5 says like this it says not a God of patience and consolation grant you to be like minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus in other words we can be like minded in the, in the, in the way that it doesn't insist on being right seeks to make things right with the body of believers with the believers okay anybody got anything else 1 Corinthians 29 is what I was looking at 12, Romans 12, 19. Romans 12, 19. Somebody have it. If you have it, read it. Uh, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for as it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. That's awesome. That's awesome. And you can write these scriptures down. Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1 and 10 here. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. Amen. That's awesome. But Amen. that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind uh -huh. and in the same judgment. Amen. And so we're looking at the grace of uh, the attributes of the believers. In grace, so we recognize that we want to keep the unity, even in that first uh, being in the same mind, recognizing uh, that is an attribute of grace. Okay, because we're talking to believers, we're talking to believers. So you know, I can't, share, I can't share this with a non-believer, one that is operating within their own selfish ambitions, or one that is going upon what they believe, not according to Scripture. This is what I believe it is. Well, where you get it from? I got this scripture to bag what I'm saying up. So we're not going to argue about it, but within this, this is to the household of faith that we may know what the attributes of grace is in our lives and not only that, that we may take these same, even the edifying of the body of Christ. Within this body, you know, we still have babes in Christ. Right. And we have babes in Christ. We got some on milk, some on meat. So we got to deny You've been in the Bible all your life, but then we got one that just came and got saved last week. They don't know what the stuff that you know because they just got saved last week. They saved now. They're going to heaven just like you're going, but they're still on milk. And so when they come to you and they say, well, I see this in it. Well, let's, let's look at the scripture and see what it says so I can have that. We can keep this unity because I don't want this new believer to get discouraged 
So let's go to the scripture and let's see what the scripture has to say about it. And then we can come into a, a common agreement as long as we line up with scripture and we have that, that unity still. You feel what I'm saying now? Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. The scripture provides us with the following with the following characteristics of grace. Here's another one. Willing to be what? Inconvenience. Lord, we don't like to be inconvenienced. Go to the scripture on that. Willing to be inconvenienced. I found one. Willing to be inconvenienced. I found one and when Paul in Acts, when he was when he was going to, to preach the gospel. And Paul got deep in this when he said, I found we're gonna read the one that's there, but I got I found another one while I was sitting here studying earlier. I would found another one where even Apostle Paul uh, was so zealous for the gospel that he said that he didn't even count his own life worthy or nothing. That he had to go do he was willing to inconvenience his whole life to get the gospel message out. So look let's look at the one, let's look at the one Ephesians five and two. And if you find another one, if you find it, go ahead and find it and, and let's look at it. Ephesians 5 and 2. Willing to be inconvenienced. Yeah. Go ahead. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us and offering a, and a sacrifice to God for all. For a sweet smelling Savior. Amen. And saying, walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. Amen. That 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 love that he gave to give us life. Ain't that something? Amen. And and now he's telling us to walk in love. What is the first the first fruit of the spirit? What is in in in, the, in, in Galatians six? It said, "But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance." He said, "Against such is such there is no law." That's grace, ain't it? Every one of them is grace, ain't it? That's attributes of grace, ain't it? There's no way to have meekness. There's no way to have patience. There's no way to have love. No way to have joy without the attribute of recognizing the attributes of grace and walking in them because of who Christ is, okay? And it said, and walk in love. And then the example was, as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us and offered as a sacrifice to God for a sweet surrender. So how can we take Christ out of grace? You can't do it. You can't reverse that and say, well, it's about, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. You can't do it. But by the will of God that I can do this, or by the grace of God that I can do it. I can't do it. I can't love my enemy as I love myself, but by the grace of God. Huh? I can't love nobody that, that, that treat me wrong and whatever without the grace of God. These are attributes of grace in the believer, guys. In the believer. Okay? One of the attributes of grace seeks the welfare of the other person. Seeks the welfare of the other person. If you have another attribute on the on the one that's willing to be inconvenienced, bring it out. Because I, I, I had Acts 20 and verse 24. And uh I'm gonna let me read that one before I go that go any further. This is an attribute that that Paul counted his own life. This is Paul in uh, Acts Acts twenty. Go to the book of Acts. Go to the book of Acts. And chapter 20. Y'all find that other, you gotta go ahead and find that other one that we were dealing with. Seeking the welfare of the other person, Philippians 2 and 3. Find that one so we can read over that one as well. 
And it is, this is Paul talking about going on. He was talking about going and preaching the gospel. And this is letting you know he wasn't thinking about himself. But around about the 24th verse in the in the uh, 20th chapter of Acts, Paul said they would, you know, that that uh that but none of these things, he said, none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of grace of God. In other words, he was going to go testify this gospel. It didn't even matter. He said, my life didn't even matter to me no more. In other words, he would put other people's salvation above how he even thought of his own life. He, in other words, I'm saved. But there's some more people that need to hear this gospel. And I'm going to get this gospel out. Regardless of what might happen to me, if I run up against trouble, guess what? I'm got to still go preach this gospel. And I got to still show love to allow Holy Spirit to use me to get this gospel message out. He said, I count not my own life. But guess what he said? He won't finish my course with joy. So it was joy in him of knowing that he was getting the grace of God to give the gospel out. So it was joy within. How could he have that kind of joy? By the grace of God. By the grace of God. Because we know all the things he came up against. We know the things he came up with. Shipwreck, bit by snakes, all these different things that he had to do. But how did he do it? By the grace of God. And with joy. And when he was stoned and they left him for dead. Yeah. He still got back up, got on back out and started preaching the gospel. Started preaching the gospel. It was by the grace of God, wasn't it? And it was the will of God that he go through. Huh? That is, it was the will of God that he went through what he went through that the gospel message still would go forth. He kept him even through the stoning. He kept him even through the being bit by snakes. Because even when he was bit by the snake, they didn't look for him to die just then. And that was a that was a miracle for him to still be. Some people got saved by seeing that. Huh? See what I'm saying? And it was by the grace of God that all this happened. But what was the reason for the purpose of the gospel message to be going forth? Amen. And that's something. Everything that happened to him, even though all of them got, well, who did, who, John was on the island of Patmos right there at the end, wasn't it? But all the rest of them got killed, didn't he? Serving the gospel. So was it the grace of God that they got killed? You mean, was it the will of God that they got killed? Yep, the will of God that they got killed. But they, the per, the purpose that God had them for, to use them for, was to get the gospel message out. And that he would supply their needs, even the grace that was upon their lives as they were getting the gospel message out. Regardless of how hard it was, regardless of what we went through, it was by God's grace. By God's grace. And then these attributes was, was, was within Jesus it was within all of these apostles and all the people that worked. These attributes had, they didn't insist on being right. They seek to make things right. Okay. They're willing to be, they were willing to be inconvenient. They were willing to be inconvenient. And then, then it's like this. It seeks the welfare of other persons. They seek the welfare of others. This is totally opposite of what we see a lot in the church today. It's totally opposite. Oftentimes, we seek the welfare of our own. Oftentimes, we don't care about what nobody else out there, they say it or not, but supposed to be the church now. Oftentimes, if we get just a little inconvenience for helping somebody else to do that, uh, I just don't think I can do that. Mind didn't be an inconvenience. See, this is grace in operation. When we recognize that, it, well, it don't bother me to be inconvenient, that's grace. Because you couldn't do it other than that. You, you cannot have, do it. We have preachers tell, preaching that Jesus didn't tell you to be a doorman. He did. He, did. Yeah. he was one. He was a, Jesus was a doorman. They used him up. What did he tell them when they came back for that food? Y'all ain't coming because of the miracle. Y'all coming back for some more food. <laughs> Y'all came back for some more food. Y'all ain't come back because of the miracle. That was a miracle that was just performed out there. And ain't nobody come to. Y'all come. Y'all want some more food. Huh? Christ, what, what not Christ when he had to leave oh glory. glory. Christ was inconvenient when he had to leave glory. Glory to come down. Come down. This, this sinful world. Sinful world. This fallen world. My he God. Was inconvenient. 
to come down and come down. put to death for us. For us. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. And then as a believer, there's a the little bit of thing can inconvenience us to lay down our lives or lay down what we think is so important that we be so inconvenient. I just can't do that to see another soul be saved mm -hmm. or to see somebody really need to be uh, uh, edified or lifted up. That is, I can't make got no time for that. See, this is the grace. These are the attributes of grace right here. Right. These are the attributes of grace. And we are supposed to, as believers, supposed to be operating in that. Because we'll say this, greater he that is in me than he that is in the world. We'll say that in a heartbeat. And if somebody come to you, somebody, even a believer, come to you in me, I can't do that. I can't, I ain't gonna, I, ain't gonna, I can't do that. No, I ain't, I ain't. I ain't got no time for that, right? I got to do what I got to do. Inconvenience. Because inconvenience means that it's, it's not convenient for you, right? right. It means that you don't have time. It means that I got to make sure that my stuff is in order. But we got to, by, by, by the grace of God that's upon us, we got to be willing to be inconvenient sometimes. That's but then the body of Christ, and guess what? Sometimes to even win a soul, Paul said what he said when he said he became all things to all people that he may win. Win souls for Christ. Win some, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So in other words, he had to inconvenience himself sometimes that he got that word of God out in places where he never even went. Or places that people would see. What he do? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus with the kids. Yes. I come to that. He was in, he supposed to be the son of God. What he mm -hmm. doing sin with the Mary Magdalene uh, 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 anoint him and, and wipe, her, wipe his feet with her hair. And they sit there. Like, like, what you what you let her do that for? <laughs> wasting up that expensive. You yeah, <laughs> wasting up all that stuff. We can feed a lot of. They want big more thing to buy. Eating with sinners. Yeah. You be eating with sinners. Yeah. He inconveniences himself to do that. Yeah. And he said Matthew five forty. Matthew 40. five and forty. Matthew five Matthew and forty. 40, 41 and forty two. Okay, go to Matthew 5, 40. Stay with us, guys. Matthew 5, 40. Matthew 5. In the gospel. In the gospel of Matthew. The gospel of Matthew. I love doing this right here. I love doing this. What is it? Uh, Matthew 5 and what now? 40. Matthew 5 and 40. Somebody want to read it or y'all want me to read it? I read it. And if a man, if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy cloak, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twice. That's two. Okay. Give to him that asks thee, and from him that will borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it had been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemy, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That is, that's it right there. Well, they, you mean to tell me I'm going to pray for somebody that cuss me? Yeah. And it's in red. Jesus said that. That's all that is. This is attributes of grace, though. Because we say by grace through faith and what, and what Christ did. And then like we say, greater he that is in me than he is in This is what Jesus told me to do. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Everybody that watched it on Facebook, they just clicked it off. I ain't gonna do that mess. You know why? Because that we don't understand grace. When we understand grace, we walk in grace and recognize that it ain't supposed to feel good to us because we're walking in grace. It ain't, it ain't about what we are or what we is because of who God is and not only that, uh, everything we have, everything we are, and everything we will be depends solely upon God's ever bounding grace working in our lives. Even when it don't look good, even when it don't feel good, even when it ain't like you want it, it's still by His grace. Did Jesus just say there was a perfect? Oh, thank God for the Holy Ghost. 
He said, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That's hard, ain't it? God's grace. God's grace. That's, that's power. This is why I wanted to do this and go through and allow Holy Spirit to speak through us while we're in the class. That way we can get what, what Holy Spirit is sharing with us that we'll grow. This is growth. It's helping me. I don't know if it's helping you. It's helping me. It's helping me. Really helping me. Because when I want to understand not only the salvation that God gives us by grace, but I want to understand the attributes as well that we may walk in it through the power of the Holy Ghost that we're able to walk in it. And it's only through the power of the Holy Ghost that we're able to do it. Amen. Amen. It's got to be through the power of the Holy Ghost. And we have the Holy Ghost because when we will uh, uh, save the Holy, we will seal with the Holy Ghost of promise. So he's there, ready to be activated, ready to walk in the, he's ready. And those fruit of the Spirit, they're there. The roots are there. The roots are there. Yeah, so, but we recognize everybody ain't at the same place at the same time. But hey, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We got to get in the word. We got to hear the word. And we got to allow Holy Spirit to guide and lead us through the word. Amen. 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 You can't, okay. I went to school on the first day, kindergarten, and I didn't go back no more. Mama can't say no ABC. Mama can't count. Mama couldn't do nothing. All mama could say, boy, get your bad behind self in here and go to bed. And mama, boy, get in here and eat. And I, I didn't go back to school. I went out. I woke up every morning. I stayed at home. I got in first grade. I went all the way until I was 20 years old. I didn't never go back to school, though. And guess what? I didn't learn nothing because I didn't never go back to school. Right. I got saved. Yes. And I accepted Christ as my Savior. But then I, I closed my Bible up. And I didn't go to no more teaching. I didn't go to no more. But I know I'm saved. But I don't know how to operate as a believer. Amen. <laughs> I don't really understand the grace that God has upon my life because I, I ain't because I ain't, I ain't learning. Does that make sense? So even as we're being discipled through the Word of God, we understand the attributes of grace. We need the teaching, y'all, and I love it because you know why? I I I've learned so much even the last couple of weeks about grace. Amen. And I'm like, that was God's grace. That's God's grace. And I'm like, I'm able to say, Thou will be done and understand that Thou will be done because of His grace, because of His sovereignty, because of His love for us. And I'm able to like, that's God's grace. Amen. It's awesome, man. And I, I like, woo, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on. Uh, God's grace is like this. Uh, speaks words that build up, not tear down. God's grace within the believer speaks words that build up and not tear down. God's grace within the believer will not allow you as a believer to take and tear another believer down. And not even that, it won't allow you to tear a non-believer down because you want to build that believer up, that, that person up, that they may receive Christ. Why? Because it said, let your light shine before the world. They may recognize who? Christ in you and glorify the Father which is in heaven. So if I'm going to tear that person down, man, that, that's a lot of times the people won't come to your churches. Because oftentimes they see the people that believers, they'll see them as an a, a infidel or somebody took their nose up there. That ain't grace. That ain't operating in grace. But by the grace of God, there go I. But by the grace of God, there go I. But by the grace of God, there go I. I got to be willing to take that stand and say, but by the grace of God, there go I. I can't stand without the grace of God. But by the grace of God, there go I. So how can I knock somebody down? Even at a household, in the household of faith, but how can I even witness to another person about the saving grace of God without recognizing the grace upon my life? Amen. Knowing that he didn't save me because I was so good. He saved me because he is good. He saved me because his grace. He saved me because I was a sinner. Mm -hmm. He gave me an opportunity to be saved. It wasn't because I was so good. It was because he's good and he has mercy. It's because He'll have mercy upon who he would have mercy. Not to the one that run it or win it, but it's to he that had what? Mercy. mercy. 
And I might have threw that a little bit out of context. But, but it's right there. It said it's by his mercy. So, understand this. Grace does what? Grace what, does what it said. Grace Number four, speaks grace speaks, speaks words, words that build up, not tear down. Not tear down. Go to Ephesians 4 and 29 and go ahead and read it. It's right here in the thing, but you can read it off the paper. You can read it off the paper. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Okay. And you know edifying is the building up, right? And that it may minister the grace unto the hearers. And we recognize that grace don't tear down. We recognize that grace is love because by God's grace, he saved us. And, that, and that's unmerited favor. It's the gift of God that God gave that gift of grace even when we was un what? Deserving. So how, if we're going we to operate in the attributes of grace, we got to recognize that there wasn't nothing that we did to deserve the grace. And sometimes we can set ourselves up on pedestals because of arrogance. And we can feel like, well, I done made it so high up in this thing. I'm up high up in this thing. Now, I'm sitting up, over, I'm the bishop. I'm the bishop. I'm sitting up high on this thing. Now I find myself sitting high and looking down low. The only one sitting high is God. And the only one looking low is God. Huh? Right. And arrogance can set us on a pedestal that we'll say, well, I've been in the church longer than they've been. And I, and no, Jesus said the one that just started in the first hour and the one started in that later hour, they get the same thing. <laughs> well, I've been going to church longer than I don't care. When I got saved, I got saved. Salvation is salvation. Salvation is salvation by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing this thing for 30 years. I don't care how long you've been doing it. It was, if you think it was because of you that you got saved, then you need to repent and start over. Because it didn't have nothing to do with you. It don't have anything to do with knowledge either because it's yeah. a new person, new convert yeah. can come in and God can illuminate can their eyes. Open their eyes. Like Paul had to go yeah. back and teach ones who had walked yeah. with Jesus. Had walked with Jesus. Ain't that something? And I think about it like that too because I'm recognized. I said, man, I just got saved. It ain't been six, eight, nine years ago. And I'm like, why do all this become Holy Ghost? I ain't never seen none of this, but Holy Ghost opened, illuminated my eyes to the scripture to see even this grace. Right. This is, I know what grace is now, but I'm recognizing about the attributes of grace. This is powerful. This is powerful. And it make me understand it a little, just a little bit, a little closer walk with him to make me understand just a little bit more about grace. And it is awesome. It is awesome. Because then I recognize it's by his grace. It's by his grace. And then I'm looking at the attributes. Not only that, these attributes that he gives us, we don't tear down. We don't tear down. And it makes me think about it even more when we're dealing with uh, uh, unbelievers. We have an opportunity to share the gospel. We ought to be willing to share the gospel. We talked about this earlier. One water, one plant, one water, one gives the increase. God gives the increase. So never think that when you plant the watering, when God gives the increase, he'll give the increase. Don't tear down. Build up. Edify. And you know, just looking at this out that red over this and these attributes, that, that convicts you because you realize that I, I realize. Me too. Me too. You. Me too. I realize yeah. that. I'm ain't living up to something. <laughs> me too. That's why I told you it was awesome to me looking at this. I'm, I'm like, living up to I say, like, I did the same like, thing. Like, oh my God. I did. God. That's why I want to bring this study in here, and I want everybody. To, you got. You don't have this sheet. Get these sheets and go over these scriptures. It yeah. will convict you. But when that conviction comes, it brings the true meaning right? of these scriptures. Yeah. Because when you get that conviction, he's yeah, not telling you like, oh, when you realize yeah. you don't have these things. He's not telling you now start pretending like uh, you have them. Right. He says you have not because right. you have That's not. not. Right. Admit to him, I don't have these mm -hmm. and I need these. I need these. Yeah. And then he'll give them. He'll give them to you. And that's the only way you can make yeah. do it in, in, in honesty. Yeah. In honesty. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to be faking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then it takes Holy Ghost to be able to even to say that I recognize I'm, I'm slacking in that. And that's what, that's what convict me to say, man, we need to get into right. this. Because these attributes of grace is going to help the believer to grow and walk in Christ 
even more, not only that, to be used of God and recognize that I got to come back to that center point where I need to be. And why? Because I want to reach somebody else with Christ. Right. And this is when we talk about that arrogance. Got to, that arrogance got to be cloop. It's got to be gone. If a man lacks wisdom, let him ask. Yes. Wisdom. Let him ask. But the first component is you got to admit you don't have it. Why? Yeah. You got to admit you're not yeah. wise and you don't have it. And yeah. that's where people miss the boat. Yeah. And that's one of my prayers that I pray all the time. Ask God to give me wisdom and knowledge and understanding of his word that I guess what that I may impute it to others. That's right. Yeah. And if I if it comes from above, then I can recognize that that man's wisdom is totally different from God's wisdom. Yes. And that's something. Man, that is awesome. The whole book of Proverbs is about man's wisdom and God's wisdom. And God's wisdom. Two wisdom. Two wisdom. The wisdom of the, from below and the wisdom, wisdom from above. above. So let nothing be done through. Am I right there? Let nothing be done through through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. That's awesome, ain't it? That's awesome. And that's a and that's a uh a place that we really have to be as a believer. And when we look at even that scripture that came after that, when it said how Jesus laid his life down and went up on the cross, and it said that 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 he was the son of God. When you look at it and see the the contrast, even in when Paul used that, but then when he go on and talk, I want to go to it. Let's go to it. See the contrast in that, and then what the example that he used in that. I'm like, how can you compare that to what even even us to when we uh Philippians. What was that? What we? What was we at? Philippians. Philippians. Yeah, Philippians. Philippians. Yeah. And it said, and it said in that Philippians two and two and three, it said, "Let nothing be done through vain, through uh, strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than themselves." That's hard, ain't it? Let not let not every man look on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. It said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Then it goes on to say this, who being in the form of God, he was in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in the fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Ain't that something? He's the son of God. He's God. He's God. But he, he said, I ain't trying to build no reputation for myself. I came humble. But he did. And he, he did. Said, don't, don't tell nobody. Yeah. Didn't want no reputation. How many people trying to make reputation now? I'm trying to leave a legacy. Mm -hmm. I want to leave a legacy. That's the foolish thing I ever heard in my life. I'm going to leave a legacy. I'm going to pass this ministry down to my son, and I'm going to leave a legacy. Well, if it's about you, then it ain't about Christ anyway. You can leave that in Fred Flintstone. <laughs> you, you can leave that in anybody because it ain't about Christ crucified. Then you can leave that to anybody. What you going to build on that? Jesus made of himself a no reputation. He humbled himself. Not only that, he humbled himself even to death on the cross. And we talking about building a legacy. Mm. The legacy is already built. Amen. <laughs> Jesus Christ is the legacy. Amen. His blood shed up on the cross is the legacy. Amen. How can I take credit from something that saved my soul? That's right. How can I want to build up something else and tie down the cross of Christ? It's foolishness. foolishness. Now you got to tell me if you got the type of attitude, the cross to you is foolish. But to us that are saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. The cross wasn't good enough for you, so I'm going to build up another legacy. I got the whole world upon my hand. No, you don't. It's foolishness. This is what he's telling you. You got to humble yourself before the Lord thy God. Amen. And you ain't got to because he will humble you because he said, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess. And he even said, those that say Lord, all of them that say Lord, Lord, they don't belong to me. Huh? But we got to be careful with this. 
We got to recognize grace. And then we got we got to recognize the attributes of grace as we're walking in this that we don't never get puffed up and lift our own selves up. But I sure did now, man. It's by the grace of God. It's by the grace of God. When we start making it about us, then we take Christ completely out of it. It's by the grace of God that everything that I'm walking through as a believer ain't gonna feel just like I want it to feel. Because if it did, that wouldn't be the will of God. I'm supposed to say, thank you, God. Your grace is sufficient. Even in this. Amen. Even in this, your grace is sufficient. It ain't about me. It's about your will. Amen. And my will ain't what your will is all the time. But your will be done. His will be done. It's going to be done whether you like it or not. Right. <laughs> you might well go on and give him the glory. Right. Amen. And this is why we let nothing be done through scribe or vain glory. In other words, don't be arguing and bringing and fussing about it. Uh, we don't do that in grace. And guess what? We don't be puffed up through vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, each esteem each other better than themselves. Ain't that something? That's just the opposite of what some teaching is, ain't it? Yes, it's opposite, ain't it? The flesh ain't, ain't going to do that. No, nah, the flesh ain't going to do that. Yeah. They ain't going to try to do it. They don't want to do No, nah, the flesh ain't going to lift nobody else up. And but, but now, people say, well, I'm born again. I got the Holy Ghost. But it's hard for them to lift somebody else up. Because they don't recognize the grace of God. And the, and the scriptures plainly tell us to lift other folk up. It tell us don't look upon uh, on, on your stuff. Look upon us people's stuff. What you need. How can I? You get it? But it's just the opposite. And then if we do, it would be like this, that I'm looking to give you something so I can get something back. Yeah. I, I'll give you something, but I'm looking for something back. Right. Right. Jesus said, if somebody borrowed it, don't even look for it back. Just give it to them. When they come get it, just give it to them. Say, God bless you. Keep moving. And I'll be calling two weeks later. Man, one of the $10 that I got from you. Yeah. <laughs> he gone, you bless you. God bless you. And I ain't got to tell. I ain't going to tell everybody that. Hey, man, I had to give blood such a $10 the other day. You got your glory right then. This has got to be taught. This has got to be understood in the life of the believer. Well, what does it do? It sets you back because you're still trying to do it within yourself and you don't recognize the grace, the attributes of grace because we yet do these things. We yet put ourselves above everybody else. We ain't studying nobody else. We ain't care about We can care less about anybody else even in the household of faith. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, let's go. And, 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 and where I'm at now? Oh, five. Five. I think I, I went the other Maybe way, but that's four, all right. Four. Five. We went speak words to build up, not tear down. We, we talked about that. Let no let no corrupt communication proceed out your mouth, but that which is good to use of edifying and, the, and that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Okay? It said... Doesn't demand to be heard, but strives to listen. Go to Proverbs 18. Let's see what it says. And then you got it, and it's right there in front of you. But we still, we can go in your book. Can we make one more point on, on verse 29? Yeah, come on. On that verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister, minister grace, grace unto the ear. That's just not. Saying bad words and negative things towards people. That's preaching a false gospel. That's corrupt. And it's not administering grace, grace. to the hearers. Mm -hmm. So we got to make sure we keep yeah. all of that in focus. Because yeah. it's not just the surface. It's not the surface. Yeah. It's that deceitful thing, mm -hmm. that false message that sounds almost like the real thing yeah. that's actually administering death yeah. and not life. Not life. Because yeah. even in, uh, in the scripture, in Galatians, when he said that, that you fall from grace. Because in other words, they will continue to try to keep the law. Then they say, you have fallen from grace. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah, so we, we, we mix legalism and law within the grace. Then, yeah, that'd be false communication or bad it communication. Sounds good and it it sounds good. good. But mm -hmm. Paul said that trying to practice the law was administration of death. Which, yeah, that, that's, that's true. That is true. And then, you know, that, that brings me to the point to where even like when we when we're evangelizing, if we go there and we're talking about everything other than Jesus Christ, then that could be the same thing, the false communication. Yeah. Because who, 
the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. If I don't, if I don't have the gospel of Christ coming forth in a message, then it's hard for anybody to get saved. Right. You know, you can, you can, you can see somebody get up there and do talk about everything in the world, and they call it the gospel. And then you see all the people up there go and get saved. And I, I watch something like that, and I say, I ain't heard the gospel. So all the people that just went up there was false communication, yeah. a bad community. Did none of them get saved because right. they didn't hear the gospel. Right. And he said nothing about the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ at all. Just told him here, if you you going through this in your life, you this can help you. If you're going through this, you in your life, Jesus can help you. If this going on, if you want to do this, Jesus can help you. Jesus can help you. He ain't said nothing about coming before him as a sinner and recognize that we sinners and that we fall short of the glory of God. Right. And that he saved, and he can save you right now, and he can be saved by faith in what he did if you trust him. But if you know you want something better in your life, and you want, and all the people just walking up there. Yes. And I ain't never heard about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ at all, according to the scripture. Thousands of folks just came up there because of some corrupt stuff okay. coming out the communication. You see it in action. Mm -hmm. You see the televangelists do it all the yeah. time. And people just, oh, I'll be crying. Oh, I'm going to have a better life now. <laughs> oh, 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 and crying. I'm like, what they crying for? He ain't preached no gospel. I ain't heard the gospel yet. I'm waiting for the gospel to be heard. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to have a better life. And I'm going to tell you, you can do this. And I'm going to tell you, you can do this. First, you got to get saved. You ain't saved yet. Corrupt communication. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm gonna tell you what you want to hear, yeah. and then make you feel all giddy inside, and then come on up in and then get on on the payroll and come on and bring that money every week. And I'm slowly kill you. And I'm gonna slowly kill you, cause the wages of sin is death, mm. and the gift of God is what eternal life. How through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, doesn't demand to be heard, but strives to listen. You somebody got that? A fool had no delight in understanding, but that his heart may what? Discover, Discover itself. Now that, so what's, what's that saying? What that saying? Doesn't demand to be heard, but strives to listen. In other words, I don't want to hear nothing else nobody got to say. In, that, in other I words, no, nah, I don't want to listen. Especially I don't want to hear about no Jesus Christ. I don't want to hear about no Jesus Christ. I don't want to hear about no man that he ain't died for me. I don't want to hear that. In other words, he, we are already got it, already know. And then oftentimes people say, well, God loves me, God loves me, God loves me. Yeah, he do love you. But do you recognize in the context of what you're saying? I don't believe in no Jesus, though. Now, how can you believe in God if you don't believe in Jesus? Huh? Doesn't demand to be heard, but strive to listen. And that can, you can go to that and you can say, a fool had, not, had no delight in understanding. That's crazy, ain't it? But that his heart may discover. Well, that's flesh, ain't it? Yeah, just like hearing self talk. Yeah, that's his flesh. In other words, I'm gonna say everything but the right thing. But I just want to hear myself say something. I'm satisfied. It's, I'm satisfied with that. I'm doing good. I got this and I got that. I'm good. I've got I got this and I got that, and I can do this and I can do that. I I I I, I. ain't I nothing know. about no grace. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Everything. Yeah. But then even this, the corrupt communication can tell you that you are able to do this. You are able to do that. You Let me lift you. You are able to do this. You ain't, ain't said nothing about no Holy Ghost. Ain't said nothing about God. Ain't said nothing about Jesus Christ. But you are able to do this. I hear preachers always talk, you do, you're so good. And you can do this. And you can do that. And you can, and you, and you. And they ain't tell you nothing that you just feeding your flesh. That dead man right now, you steady feeding him. Because you think your flesh can do something to please God. And your flesh cannot please God. But if I tell you, oh, you can do this. And you can do that. You'd be so, oh, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. It's foolish, ain't it? But it sounds good, don't it? Sounds sound good to a lot of people because they ain't hear the gospel. And they don't really know what, what our, our righteousness or what? Nothing but fit the rags unto God. In other words, I'm going to tell you, you can be righteous. But I ain't telling you you can be righteous. The righteousness of Christ. Right. You can be right. I'm righteous. Some of the people that I'm righteous. How? I'm righteous. 
I'm, I'm, I'm able to say by the grace of God the righteousness of, of Christ yes. in me through the power of the Holy Ghost. I ain't taking no credit for nothing. Period. It's by the grace of God that I am what I am. And if I want to take any credit for it, then I'm taking it away from God. I mean, if that gift of grace is no gift anymore because I'm ta I want to take some credit like I'm deserving of it. Right. right. So if I'm deserving of it, then it ain't grace anymore, right? Because grace is unmerited favor, right? Grace means that it wasn't nothing that I did to deserve it, right? If it's a gift, that means I didn't pay. I didn't do nothing. Christ paid for it, didn't he? Right? We got to get it right because if if I want to. Change, I want, if I want to replace Christ with myself, then I'm I'm going totally wrong because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. This sinful body got to die. Right. It's got to leave here. Right. Oh, you always say when somebody had a funeral, sin found them out, didn't you? Because right. <laughs> the wages of sin is death. Right. But the gift of God is eternal life. I'm coming up out of that because to be acting in the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Huh? Amen. Come on now, we got to understand that. All right. Six, focus on other needs instead of the of our own. In other words, that's the same verse that we read earlier. It said, uh, look not every man on his own things, but what? Every man also on the things of others. And we want to keep that in the context too, because we don't want to always be the one just running out there to see who we can find to do this, who can we find to do that. And then in other words, you're doing it for selfish Ambition. In other words, you're doing it because something to bring yourself. It can be caught up that you can be bringing be yourself some some you glory and want to be seen. And it happens all the time. And we've seen through this pandemic that you see everybody in the world doing all kind of stuff, giving people this, giving people that, giving that. But that ain't the mean to say that they've done it through Christ. But it still right. can tell you like this, that if it's God's grace upon whoever got it, they really need it. But I can't get no credit for it because guess why? I ain't operating in, that ain't operating in grace. The attributes of grace mean I don't want no I don't want nobody to give me no kind of no uh, accolades yeah, because because I want to look upon others' uh, needs and that and, and and then we got to be careful with that too. We got to make sure that whatever we do, it ain't out of strife or vain glory that it's doing something to be puffed up. Okay, we don't got to tell everybody what we're doing. You ain't got to tell everybody what you do for somebody, but but you ought to want to even lift up a believer or somebody outside of the faith. And your reason is to what? Try to share Christ with them. It's, yeah, yeah. You you want to share when you when you're doing that. It, it ain't to, for somebody to pat you on the back. It ain't for, if that person ain't saved. I'm doing this. I can get close to them so I can share Christ with them. That opportunity is going to come where I can share the gospel. Right. And I don't think a, a, enough people in the body of Christ understand that you can have two identical people doing two identical deeds. Yeah. And one could be doing them in Christ, in Christ. and one can be doing them outside, outside of, Christ. of Christ. What is done outside of faith is sin. Yeah. It could be the same identical Same identical, same identical when identical a believer task. does it, it's a good work. It's a good work. But when a sinner, when a lost person does it, it's sin. It's and they sin. did the same exact same thing. thing. The same. Feeding same the thing. hungry. Yeah. One outside of Christ, yeah. feeding the hungry is sin. Yeah. One inside of Christ, feeding the hungry, kind of that's a good work. Good work. Because that's how it works. Because now that we're saved, we're able to work. To work. Yeah. That's awesome. We got our working yeah. permit. We got our working yeah. permit. That's it. Well, yeah. You have a lot of people that do good things. Mm -hmm. But what are they doing it for? Why are they doing yeah. it? Right. You know. You got a lot of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Bible says anything done outside of faith is sin. Yeah. That's yeah. It didn't say the bad things done outside of faith mm -hmm. is sin. It said anything done outside of faith mm -hmm. is sin. Yeah. So that's what we, what man calls good. Yeah. If it's not, if you're not saved, you're still sinning. Yeah. And that's why we're able to work now that we're in Christ. Yeah, we're able to work now we're in Christ. And that's why we, that's why when we look at it in, in Ephesians uh, 2 and 8, when we go down there and say we are his workmanship created in Christ, that we may walk in it. That's what we're doing then. We walking in Christ. Because we're his workmanship that we created before we were foreordained, that we can walk in it now. Now we can do it. Because we know you recognize right. that we saved by grace through faith and not by works. So we recognize that we can work now that we're saved. We don't even know <coughs> what the works are before. Yeah. 
on your job, you go to work to find out what the work is. Once you're hired, you mm -hmm. go to the job to find out what the work is. You don't sit at home and come up with a list of things you're going to go and let right. somebody pay you to do. Right. You yeah. came up with that list. Right. Right. Yeah, so, exactly. So God is already ordained. ordained. Once you get saved, you find mm -hmm. yourself walking in them. Then yeah. you start finding out what the work yeah. is after you after. get saved. And that was something that even as a believer, even as a pastor, that I had to learn that I can't just go in there making up lists of things that I need. It's got to be lining up with the script and it's got to be God. He foreordained it anyway. So whatever this ministry is doing, it's been foreordained anyway. All we got to do is what? Walk in it. <laughs> Ain't that something? That's good. All we got to do is walk in it. Ain't got to be making up nothing, making up this. And I got, I had to repent of that. I had to repent of that. Because when I first come in in the first year, I'm rigging this list and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And then, and then God, I had to repent. I said, Lord, forgive me for that because I got ahead of you. You already know what you want us to be doing. I ain't. I don't have to be doing all that. All I got to do is be obedient to your word. You get what I'm saying? And I'm like, he he, he put my butt behind that. He did, boy, it hurt too. And I, he put me in my place. And, and I really what it meant to be uh, reproved then by God. That I had to repent of that because I got ahead of what he That's had right. planned for this ministry. That's right. And a lot of people couldn't understand it. And they're like, we, we, we were doing this and we were doing that. Yeah, but y'all don't understand we're doing that because yeah. it's something that was on my heart to do. I had to repent of that. Amen. I said, Lord, forgive me of that because I got ahead of you in that. And, I, and then he put other things in order. So so we so we really need to understand that. And that, and I thank God for that grace and I thank him for the mercy that he did, you know, he allowed me to see it. Amen. And then when we say direct our path, he will. We will say him, acknowledge him. And he will direct our path. When we acknowledge him, he will direct our path. And guess what? He will get the glory out of it, and then guess what we'll be? In his will. In his will. And guess what? How it will be done? By his grace. Amen. You see that? Amen. And that's something. And he has the grace upon it to make it all just flow. And that's something. And we get outside of his will, then it's disaster. So, man, that's that's awesome. Let's, we're going to get seven and we're going to go. We're going to get, let's see. Let's get our, let's get, is that seven? Yes. Let's get seven and then we're going to get out of here. Uh, attributes of grace in the believer. Good teaching. Good teaching. Good teaching. Read that for me. Read that last one for me. Attributes of grace. You know, attributes of grace. But let's look at what it said. Acts with humility, not pride. And I might just take that and run into another teaching for next week and I'm going to show y'all what it is. Go with this and we're going to run out of that. We're going to run into something else. Uh, grace acts with humility, not pride. What it is? 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. Read it. It's not puffed up. You see that? So we recognize again, envy, not envy. In other words, all those old attributes of the flesh. Though we, we as, as we when we recognize grace, we want to walk in this charity, suffer it long. That's long suffering again. That goes a, a fruit of the spirit again, y'all. And they say it's kind. Charity envy it not, and we talked about that. We don't envy in, in that that. By grace, we recognize we can't envy. And then charity vaunted not itself, it is not puffed up. When we recognize the attribute of grace, we recognize that we can't be puffed up as believers. We cannot be puffed up as believers. And I know it sound, it sound like, I don't really know no, no, it's a lot of believers that's puffed up. Well, you know why I don't? Because we don't recognize <laughs> grace. We don't recognize grace when we save, we get saved and we look outside and we look at ourselves as being better than others and then we'll puff ourselves mm -hmm. up because we'll think, but by the grace of God, that go I. Mm -hmm. And you don't realize that you still a sinner saved by grace. You saved by grace. And when you looking outside, take the plank out of your eye. Or, or, yeah, you take the, what do you say? Take the mold out of your eye, then you can help somebody take the plank out of there. In other words, I can look at myself and see who I am truly a sinner saved by grace. 
saved by grace through faith in what Christ did up on Calvary. And it, I didn't get saved because I was so good. I got it all together. Then I came to God. Then he saved me. That's a lie. You had to come before the cross of Christ as a sinner. And if you puff yourself up to make you think you're better than somebody, you need to repent from yourself. We need to repent from ourselves. And it's sad that we as believers don't recognize that it wasn't nothing that you did yourself to be saved. You had to come before the cross of Christ as a sinner. Right. And he saved you while we were yet in sin. He died for us on Calvary's cross. And that not only that, that when we see somebody else or see others that aren't living like you say you living, then we can look, ooh, they should But by the grace of God, there go I. We got to realize that we can't be all puffed up to the point to where you can't reach nobody else. Every time you ran across people, you say, hey, how you doing, girl? What's up next? Oh, child, I'm, what is it? I'm sanctified, saved, and I'm, 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 I'm highly favored, and highly this, and highly that. Unless they answer to you. Yeah. That, you know, being puffed up about. Being puffed up. It, but, but salvation is not to make us think we better than somebody uh -uh. else. We just blessed to be saved. Yeah. yeah. It should make you hang your head and yeah. say, yeah. Yeah, my Savior had to leave saved. heaven to yeah. come down here to save something like yeah. me. Yeah. That is the, you can't brag saved. about being a Christian. Yeah. You can brag about your Savior, but yeah. the fact that you're a Christian because you are riding low down sinner and Christ had to leave his throne in glory to come down here to save you. To that save nothing to brag about me. Nothing. I'm going to brag about him all day long. I'm going to brag about I'm Christ. I'm about this. Now, and that's, and man, that is, that is, that is what we have to, and we've got to recognize See, grace. That'll put, that'll put you off right there. Somebody saying that'll put you off right there. Mm -hmm. you know, you, you because know, you got to translate what they're saying. Yeah. When they say that, they're saying, I'm blessed and highly favored, and you're not. You're not. That's I what they're saying. That's, yeah. that's, that's exactly puffed. what they're saying. That's yeah. You yeah. put off yeah. that. And you, yeah. pull, and you puffed up then. Yeah. You being yeah. puffed up. It's like, I can't reach this person right here because now you made me feel like I'm lower than low. I right. feel like which I am. Right. And you are too. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Oh, bless the Hall of Fame with what that mean I am. So you trying to tell me, you know what, I don't want to go to church because you told that when I walk in there, y'all gonna look at me. Everybody else gonna be puffed up, then I'm gonna be looking. He tell us don't do that. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, he said somebody come in all dressed in old fancy clothes and all that, don't tell him to come on up to the front. Right, right. <laughs> it's because he you, all you just come on in, you yeah. in the back, and then you let somebody fight you. Fight you up. That's right. That's right. Hey, Amen. Yeah. So this is what we got to know and recognize the attributes of grace. Well, I say this, and I'm gonna get out of here because I want to teach this through the power of the Holy Ghost, so we can recognize what we need to be. So when new believers come, or when we go out to evangelize, that we ain't all puffed up. And we ain't all these things. We'll operate in these in the proper way that we can reach the lost for Christ. Because you can't reach the lost for Christ if you're too good to even go out there right. to reach the lost for Christ. Christ didn't meet no strangers. He went. He went in the hood. He went in the worst of the worst. He did. He came to do the will of the Father. Zacchaeus, come out of that tree, you tax collector. I'm going to your house, and we're gonna chill, and we gonna, and he gonna get saved. He is a leper. You know yeah. everybody. He is a leper, but not not Christ. He yeah, Christ went on to the leper. Yeah. He didn't see them. Go yeah. I know. And see that, so we got to recognize because this, just as sure as I'm sitting there teaching us to recognize this somewhere, somewhere else, some people telling them, y'all don't need to, you can't be equally yoked and they'll use that and tell them that no, how you going to reach somebody lost? How you going to reach somebody lost? We recognize you're not equally yoked, mm -hmm. but we recognize that you too can fall short. And do fall short. How you gonna read some out of laws? And, and, and I think that verse strictly applies to an unbeliever and a believer. And a believer. Right. Unequally yoked right. is when I'm believing I'm saved by grace, and my partner is believing that you're saved by, by works. works. That's unequally yoked. Un unequally yoked. But see that person out there in the street. Those people are closer to their salvation than the person sitting up right. thinking they're saved inside that's the church true. building. Because yeah. those people, that's true. nine times out of ten, they already know they're nothing. Yes. And that's what you got to get to to be saved. You got to realize you're nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, come to the end. That's true. Come to the end. So, man, we thank God for this, this opportunity to come in. And this is what I want to do uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit to come in and to be able to talk and dialogue. And we still feminine, but we want to be able to talk and dialogue because... 
faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I feel like when we all reading, you're reading them words and they're going right back in your ears and coming to my ears. And we're able to talk and dialogue. And this is great teaching. This is great teaching. And then we, we left that verse and we're gonna get, I want to give you this one to uh, Sister Gilda. And then we're going to look at this because we come out of that arrogance. And I want, I'm going to look at that next week. Pass that to her. I want to look at that next week. We're going to find another one. Uh, cause I wrote on one, and cause, cause that arrogance, because coming right out of that being puffed up, look at the arrogance of the devil. Look at the arrogance of him when he was put out. You see what I'm talking? About? I want to be. You, look at it. Ah, it's right down the scripture. And then how can we say that I'm gonna be higher than God and not realize that that's the very reason that got Satan kicked out of heaven? He was the pride. Pride is what got him kicked out of heaven. Because he did. He was beautiful. And he was. And pride got him kicked out of heaven. And we want to be puffed up. Even us as believers. We want to puff ourselves up. I don't want to be like Satan. That be so powerful that I'm sitting there. That I'm all this and I'm all that. And I don't want God to frown upon me like that. I don't want to break fellowship with him. Because I don't recognize what his grace truly is. It's grace. It's his grace. He hates a proud look. Amen. He hates so pride. He hates pride. But we're being we be we're being taught within the body of Christ to have pride. Yeah. And, we, and it's just the opposite. Well, you know why? Because Satan don't really want you to see the cost of Christ. And his ministers. And his ministers. That's right. He don't want you to see it. Anything that I can put to to get your stumbling block, let me do it. And if it work, I know you love your flesh. Because his flesh still, this is why I tell you that the flesh man still there. And Paul told Timothy that they would go, they had itching ears and want to make build up teachers for their own self so they can hear what they want to hear to make them feel good. And Paul warned Timothy of that. So it's still in the church right now that we can have itching ears because that don't, I just don't want to hear about Jesus on the cross no more. I just don't want to hear about I don't want to hear I want something that's going to make me feel good. You ought to feel good that you saved by grace. That it wasn't nothing that you brought to the table but sin and he took your sin away. Christ is able to save right now to the uttermost. If you will come before him right now and trust the gospel of Jesus Christ guess what? He died for your sin and guess what? He will bear it for your sin according to the scripture and on the third day he arose from the dead and then guess what? He ascended into heaven and sit on the right hand of God the Father Almighty and anybody that will come before him right now come before him right now I don't care if you've been in the church for a hundred years but if you've been leaning upon your own goodness your own righteousness you need to repent turn from that and come to Jesus and guess what he'll say to you right now if you, if, you, if you will come to your ends right now and even recognize that there is nothing that you can do to save yourself turn from any thought in your mind that is that will keep you from Christ and trust him for salvation, you could be saved right now. Death, bearing, resurrection, we're saved by grace through faith, not by works that any man shall boast, but it's the gift of God that salvation is given to us right now. We bring all the sin because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. He's able to save you right now. And not only that, he will justify you right now. You will be justified. You'll be made right right now if you trust him. If you trust him right now, you'll be made just right now. Not only that, you'll be sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. Not only that, you'll be reborn. You'll be regenerated. You'll get a new spirit. Hallelujah. So if there be one today that want to be saved, Come on and accept Christ as your Savior today. And guess what? I, we're doing what we're supposed to do. We're planting and watering. And God will give the increase. So we pray that tonight that somebody heard something that would help you in your walk today. Not only that, we pray that somebody heard something today that make you want to accept Christ as your Savior right now. And that, that he said that he's able to save you right now to the uttermost. Today is the day of salvation. We're not just doing this to... to, to to be seen. We're doing what we're doing that souls be saved. Amen. That the lost be saved. And so we thank God for this opportunity tonight. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity once again to come in and share your word. Father God, we thank you for that soul that came tonight and accepted you as Savior. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that you allow uh, uh, the, uh, Christ to dwell in their hearts by faith. 
Father God, we thank you for the edifying and building up of the saints tonight through your word. Father God, we thank you for opening our eyes to grace, the attributes of grace within the believer. We thank you, Father God. Now, Father, we ask that you operate through the power of the Holy Ghost to guide and lead us, Lord God, to show us, illuminate the scriptures to us, Lord God, that we may walk in them. Father God, we bless your holy name. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory in all things. We thank you, Lord God. Now, Father God, we ask that you will continue to keep us and guide us and lead us. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your holy word, Lord God, that we may impute it unto your people. Father God, give us that strength, Lord God, to have that joy and that peace and that long suffering and that meekness and, and that love that you have given us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We ask that you bless each and every family that's represented here tonight, not only them, but all the loved ones. Father, we pray for the lost all over the world, Lord God, that somebody will reach them through the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you for those that are saved right now. And Father, we recognize that Jesus Christ is the power of, of the, Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation to all that believe it. And we thank you for the cross of Christ. We thank you for the blood that was shed upon Calvary. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. And we say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen, amen, and amen. amen. God bless you. Amen. amen. Y'all got to forgive me. <laughs>